Okay, guys, I am so excited to have Rachel. Um, she is number 12 income earner. She had to correct me earlier because I was like, you're number 13, right? She's like, don't you dare. She's like, oh, are you number four? I was like, you're right. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're right. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. I'll go through Facebook a month back to, before I ever say that again. So anyways, you guys, clearly um, she has something to offer. Clearly she has something to give. And I love her so much because um, she says all the things that like I normally don't say, you know, like she just asks really good questions. She's always just willing to just share everything. And I'm like, Oh, I never thought about sharing that. You know, it's one of those things where, um, I think that you have this power of like lifting people up, but also just having like a good connection, you know, and that I think is super important. Well, the most important thing in this business. So we are very excited to have you. And I also love your very red personality because she's the one person that messaged me. She's like, can you tell me, can you tell me how much I, you made so that I can see how much where I'm going to be for my number. And like, <laughs> she's like, they say they don't care about the numbers, but I care about my number. <laughs> I'm like, me too. So anyways, that's my kind of jam right there. Um, so I'm super excited to have you. Um, if you guys have any questions for her, put it in the chat and I'll kind of pick and decide if it's a good question, but Rachel, can you just go ahead and start with your story? Like who you are, where you came from, all the nitty gritty, share as much as you want, because that's my favorite part. Okay, cool. I, I'm glad you said that because sometimes people, some, you know, it's funny when you get on different Zooms and you know what type of leader like it is because they'll be like, like 60 second story. And I'm like, okay, got it. I, I definitely like pick up if 30 fun. minutes is your story. That's fine by me. <laughs> well, sometimes it's like, and I like that because sometimes there are learning points, you know, in the midst of your story. And I'm a rambler, but I've been trying to be more aware. But it is funny that Christy's called me red. Very funny because I'm actually very, very yellow. But with money, I'm really red. So I don't really know what I am. I'm like orange, but I'm yellow with my team in a sense. I don't know what I am, but it's just really, I've never, no one's ever called me red really. Um, so that's cool. But uh, yes, guys, and Christy inspires me. And I was just talking about her team with um, Zach earlier. And it's funny because I went, I voiced you when I voiced you saying, were you number four? Zach was looked at me like, wow, that was rude. I was like, no, we're just kidding with each other. I think, I think we're just kidding. That's where my yellow comes in. Anyways, it's, um, it's, it's hard. It's hard to hurt my feelings. So it's fine. <laughs> Zach literally was like, wow, that was rude. You know, she's number three. And I was like, she called me number 13 though. Anyways, um, all, all jokes aside, really funny, but I am about to celebrate six years, um, six years with this company. And it's crazy because I'm the type of person where I honestly give up whenever things get hard. This is the one and only in my marriage. This in my marriage, I have not given up on every other thing I have, which is why I'm still overweight and why I'm still struggling with my life. But hey, I got half of it put together. Um, and so when I joined, I think I have a story that a lot of people have. And I know even Christy and I have like a similar story in the sense of just being um, younger and being on government assistance. You were too, Christy, I think, right? Weren't you? I think yeah. everyone has that story, right? And so I say that because sometimes I just think that we automatically rule, rule them out in a sense of like, if they don't, if people don't have money, like they're not good enough in a sense. And so I didn't have a brain cell for this. I was 21 years old in college and I had an eight month old son. And, um, like I said, I did things out of order and life was really hard. And my husband was, uh, my fiance at the time was on salary pay, which meant he was going in early, staying in later, and his hours were abused, and he didn't have a relationship with our son. And that was when life really got hard. But even though life was hard, I wasn't looking for this because I truly didn't have a brain cell for it. So I say that also in the sense of like hoping that that gets you guys excited, just like when you're talking and you're sharing your story and you're like in these conversations, you can have good people that never thought that they would join and always said no and just never ever had a brain cell for that. So um, the, the turning point for me and when I was like, there's got to be more to life than this was when um, Zach would literally come through the door and have 15 minutes with Carter before bed and he'd walk in the door and just do what any other father would do and be like, come here. And Carter would like cry and turn away. And they didn't have a relationship because Zach was never home. And that was on the days that I wasn't working my life away. The other days, Zach would be picking him up from the babysitter. So I was in college, a full-time mom, full-time student, full-time waitress. Um, and again, I just went from, this is how life is going to be, is supposed to be as a young, dumb, responsible person to there surely has got to be more to life than this. And honestly, around that time, and I didn't have a relationship with God, um, 
it was just foggy. I mean, I didn't grow up like in church. Um, I, I, I knew God from Zach and Zach's relationship wasn't really strong. So it's like, I wasn't necessarily like I was praying for it at the time, but now looking back, I'm like, wow, that was loud and clear because I was going to school for social work and I was going to school for social work knowing dang well that I wasn't going to make a lot of money, but I was in it for my heart and wanting to help people. And it's so funny that like where I'm doing that in a different way. I thought I was going to help like abused and neglected children. And here I am not helping abused and neglected adults, but you get, you get what I'm saying. So, um, God placed this path, this in my path. And there was only one person posting on my social media, only one. And if there were any other pe person on there, I would have definitely joined with them. Cause like we were not in the same friend group, definitely not my choice. She's not in the business anymore, but I was just interested in the products. Um, I used my birthday money to buy one wrap and my results were so, so, so good. And she tried getting me as a customer and I shot her down and I was like, I'm probably never going to be able to spend money on this. And so you guys, I said no to the $59 deal as a loyal customer the same day that I said yes to joining your team for $100. So that just goes to show that I promise if it's the right person, you'll like, you just, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person, right? And so she, um, she brought up the same thing. She didn't have anything special that she said. She just was like, well, what if you made money while using the products and you could use the products for free, yada, yada, yada. And I shot her down with every excuse in the book, no time, no money, just insecure, all of the things. And she wanted me even more. So I just gave her a fair shot to just, give me her spiel, wasn't a good one because she was new too, but she told me enough to where I was like, I really think I could at least make a couple hundred dollars a month. I, I believed that. And for me, like knowing that I could make a couple hundred dollars a month was like, in my head, making like $5,000 a month because that's how bad we needed it. So I called Zach on his emergency line. He was so annoyed because I abused that line <laughs> to tell him that I was using the credit card and I was just asking for his blessing. He said no, but I was so excited to do it that I was going to do it no matter what. So um, I did it. And the one thing he said was, if you, it's okay if you suck, but you have to make the hundred dollars back. Like that's at least what you have to do. So I joined with an eight month old son, but I wanted to do it for Zach. I didn't ever want to be a stay at home mom because we never had the money to do it. We, it was never in the cards for us. So with me being sensitive and emotional, I was just like, if I just tell myself I don't want it, it kind of hurts a little less, right? So I didn't join with this big dream of stuff for my son. I was like, I'm gonna prove Zach wrong and I'm gonna bring extra money into our family. And so I joined, I was just ignorance on fire, so excited, um, did all the things the wrong way, but I did a lot of it to where it worked out. Like I just messaged everyone on my friends list, the most tacky message. We didn't really know what we were doing, but we, like I said, I just did enough of it. And I think it honestly was my excitement and my willingness to learn. And you guys, I was still a full-time college student. I wanna make that clear. And I was waitressing four days a week from 4 p.m. to 3 a.m. So I really didn't have a lot of time. And looking back, I'm like, I don't know how I did it, but we were just talking about this on another Zoom we just did. And we were talking about how sometimes when you have a lot of time, it's almost worse than when we didn't have any time. And so I didn't have a lot of time, but I was intentional with that time. And so um, I just did the dang thing. And I went diamond in 90 days. And that comma in our paycheck was what really got our business going because that's when Zach was like, the money is real. He wasn't like the, the, he wasn't a mean, he wasn't mean or like the typical skeptical mean husband. He just was like, I don't know. I've never seen anyone do good with these pyramid schemes type of guy, but he didn't hold me back in like the aggressive way that some people actually have to deal with. So I want to make that clear, but it was hard to do it with him behind me instead of beside me. Right. And so, uh, he jumped on board and he was excited when that, when that diamond money was coming in. And so two months later I got him to diamond and me to double. And that was the first time Mark uh, doubled the bonuses. And it's about time he probably does that again, <laughs> but he doubled the bonuses. And we were like, wow, this is a lot of money. So it was like $60,000 in bonuses, which was just under five figures monthly for us. And we're 22 years old. I'm still in college, about to graduate. I was like right there that my parents were like, you're going to finish. Even if you don't use your degree, you're going to finish. So I finished. Um, and honestly, going double in five months and Zach being my diamond, that's when we truly know, knew like what we had our hands on. And so he quit his job. I quit my waitressing job. Um, the day after we promoted to double, we moved into our house and we ran with it. And so right after that, I was set up for triple because we were like, okay, now we have to really make this work. We are home doing this. Everyone thinks we're psycho. We're crazy. We kind of thought we were crazy. I was set up for triple that six month. And then everything fell apart in my head. It felt like that. I don't think it really did because I never like didn't maintain double, but I was set up. And that was when I really dealt with like quitters for the first time. And I was so ign like just ignorance on fire. No one ever slowed me down to be like, just so you know, 
people might not have the same vision and people might quit on you. And so I remember just being like frustrated and mad in the sense of like, how could people not share the same fire? Why are they giving up? It felt like they were giving up on me. So that kind of hit me hard. And I kind of took a year after that to rebuild triple in a strong way. Um, cause I had no other choice, but to do that. And I grew a lot through that year and I went triple 15 months in. Um, and that was when that was another huge defining moment in my business, because that was when like the big, big money came in. And um, right after we went triple, we got pregnant with our second son, Elijah. And the pregnancy was horrible enough to where Zach got surgery right away. I was like, never again. I wanted to, I wanted a, I still kind of low key want a daughter, but I wanted a daughter like so freaking bad where I was like, if I have to have five kids, I'll do it. But Eli was so horrible that I was like, nope, no more daughter, no daughter ever. But anyways, I was puking every single day of that pregnancy. And so that after triple and making that good money was the first time that, uh, my business wasn't going really good because my business wasn't my first priority. And so it was honestly like my seventh priority because my marriage was kind of struggling. I was depressed, puking every day. Oh, everything was just horrible. So I just didn't care about it works that much because I physically couldn't. Um, and so my check kind of just went down, down, down. Um, and then I lost triple. And when I lost triple, I felt like the world was ending. <laughs> And I remember Zach sitting me down because I was forcing that maintenance. Like I was forcing it month after month and it wasn't even fun. And I knew it felt wrong. And I remember Zach sitting me down in August and he was like, you need to wrap your head around the fact that you're not going to maintain this month. And that sounds harsh, but that's how obsessed and addicted I was to this company that he had to like prep me up for the letdown. Right. And so when I lost triple, I felt like, why am I even in this? If I can't even maintain my highest rank. Right. And I just was so dramatic about it. And so I kind of just slacked off that was in August, slacked off my birthing. My, when I had Eli, it was in November. So I was so caught up in just like getting this child out of my body. I wanted everything back. I wanted control over my feelings. I wanted everything that I wasn't even paying attention to. It worked so far as to losing double the same month that I gave birth. So here I am, and not only did I lose triple, but then I lose double after making really good money. And when you make really good money really fast and you don't have people in your corner showing you how to save, you spend really big money really fast. And so here we are, now we're living outside of our means and now everything in life feels hard. So anyways, that all of that to be said, she gave me the freaking reins and this is why you don't do that. But with all that to be said, I say, say all of that in a long drawn out story to tell you that if you're in this business for the long haul, you're going to go through the ups and downs. I'm not saying you're gonna hit as hard as I did. And I'm not even saying me hitting my low was the ultimate low. Like there are people on my team that I'm like, how did you survive like some of the things you went through? So I'm not saying that, but for me, that was the hardest and the lowest of lows was 2016. So at the end of 2016, when I had my son and I'm like, it's time to figure out if I'm gonna stay or if I'm gonna go. And the reason I say that is because when you're good at something for so long and then you start to do bad for so long, it almost messes with you in the sense of your identity. I'm like, maybe I'm a one hit wonder and I'm not meant to be a part of this, right? I don't know, all of these crazy thoughts because I was just weak, weak-minded. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, if this isn't for me, just make it so obvious, like slam the door in my face because there's nothing worse than like not knowing what your purpose is, right? And he never slammed the door. Like I wish I had part of my story where I was like, now this is where it gets good, but he didn't do anything. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm assuming you're just telling me to pull up my big girl pants and I'm just gonna do the dang thing. So I started completely over in 2017. I've always had a really big strong leg and I'm so blessed for that, but everybody was pretty crumbly and like falling apart outside of that. So I completely started over and I messaged those that were left and I was like, here's the deal, I failed you. I've let you down. Here's the honest, the honest, uh, the honesty in all of this is, and I just told them everything and why I hadn't been a good leader. And, and I just asked them to trust me. And I was like, if you're willing to do this, I'm ready to go. And I think I had maybe like 10 people outside of my strong leg ready to go, all paid as distributor. It didn't matter what their lifetime rank was. And we just started all over. And when I say start over, the, the question I usually get is like, well, what did you do? Because some of you guys might be coming out of a funk right now. Some of you guys are like, I don't know if I can have those big checks again. I honestly... And it's crazy because we just did a Zoom and Alyssa said, I, was a, I became a student. And that's what I did is I became a student again. That's what we do in the beginning. And then life happens and we forget what we did to have that success in the first place. And so I started staying up a little later, waking up a little earlier and getting on those YouTube videos and training myself how to be a leader again. And it's the same thing like riding a bicycle. 
I don't know about you guys. I haven't gotten on a bike in a while, but Zach bought me a bike. I got on and I'm a little bit overweight. Okay. I'm a lot overweight, but I got on the bike like a couple of months ago. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I was like trembling. And I was like, I don't even know if I can do this. It's been so long. But then as I started going, it all comes back to you. Right. And now you're riding your bike and you're sweating and you're doing all the things. That's how I like saw the leadership. It's like when you've been a leader and you've gotten to these high points, you can do it all again. It will come back. You have to exercise those muscles. And that's what we did. And so in 2017, I was paid as a diamond in January and um, just did it all over again. I regained uh, double in February, triple in March, and then I went presidential in April. And in the midst of that four month span, I gave myself a $17,000 raise. And I said, I will never, it, it, I don't think I said I'll never lose rank again, but I was like, I'll never get, get pregnant again. And I will never ever lose myself again even if that means I lose rank. And so honestly, I didn't do self-development until after presidential because I had the mindset, like if I'm pumped, why do I have to intentionally do more, right? Stupid, so silly. And so honestly, ever since 2017 going presidential, I haven't really had any crazy life happen um, to where it knocked me down, but I have lost rank up and down, but I've just grown and grown and grown. And now I feel like that was such a big part of my story and why I had to take so long to share it with you guys, just to show you that there is no, there's no like waste in your pain or whatever that, that, that's, I can't even, I'm getting it. There's, there's purpose to your pain. There's just not a waste in it, you guys. And so I just know why I went through that. And when I was going through it, I'm like, wow, this is like a seven month, really hard time in my life. But now looking back, I'm like, now I get to help others that lose rank and feel like their life is crashing down. And I can say there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it all comes down to your mindset and it comes down to us. And I'm just so glad I never gave up on myself. Um, and I just learned a lot. And so I went ambassador last year and I promoted to diamond double and triple this year, came really close to Prez. Um, but then I just kind of had a rebuild. And so that's where I'm at right now is just kind of learning through, I'm not struggling. I'm just like kind of rebuilding and kind of just figuring out like who my new key players are with like we're coming out of this crazy world and now people are trying to get like the last half of the year figured out what they're doing with schooling and I just truly feel like there was a handful of people that were meant to be part of the first season of the year and I can feel God like paving the way for me to accept new responsibilities with new people I don't know how to explain it any other way than that and so right now I'm just kind of picking my chart apart and figuring it out um, and I'm just ready for the rest of this year so that's my story and that's where I'm at now. Oh, you're the cutest. I actually, the thing is, is that I think in order for people to level up, you have to have conversations of the people who already have leveled up. So I appreciate every single thing you said, because there's somebody who might have joined this business today and they're like, what is she talking about? But the thing is, is you guys, it's so like logical. It is a business. I say it all the time. Like Target is not going to get higher sales than they did last month, every single month. They're not going to go up every single month. They're going to have times where they go down and they go up. But what I love what you said is you have that control. Like you get to decide that that's not going to, what's wrong with my freaking speaker? Um, that that's not going to happen again. And so I think it's just important for you guys to know that like, it's a business. It's never going to be perfect, but we do have so much control over it. Um, and how about that $17,000 paycheck raise though? <laughs> That's all I heard. Yeah. I blacked out after that. Um, <laughs> but I just love that so much too, because I feel the same way. Like I sat down today and I made new game plans for the rest of the year because with the people that I want to work with essentially, um, because you guys, whether you're new or not new, there's going to be times in your business where there's people that were here for a season and they don't want to move on to your next season, but you really want them to because you see so much in them. And sometimes you just have to like say that prayer and wish them well. And if they do want to, you know, continue on in the next season, that's great. You know, if they don't, that's it. I even have this with newbies. I'm like, I swear you've never even got started, but I know you can do so good. And then they just like never even get started. And I'm like, okay, I have to let it go. Like I have to let it go. Pam says it all the time. You got to break up with your boyfriend to find your husband. And I don't know you if you guys have heard these stories in real life, but that was literally my real life. So I'm, I take it very literally. Mm -hmm. Um, so Rachel, I just love every single part of your story because I think it's so important. Um, and also to hear that all of those things and you're literally number 12 in the entire company right now. So clearly you got your big girl panties on and mm -hmm. you moved forward. And you guys, mm -hmm. if you don't know what she meant, she went ambassador last year, which is the highest rank in the company. And then she went 
um, diamond double and triple this year on her second account. Um, so clearly she knows what she's doing. So you and I, um, have been talking a little bit about TikTok, and I know that we both kind of hesitated on starting it. You know, it was something new, something uncomfortable. We didn't really want to do it. Um, but can you share what you're excited about right now, if that's it, and where you feel like, because I know yesterday or the day before you were like, I just signed three distributors today. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, so can you share all the goods there? Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. This is cool. I did not think you would ask me about TikTok. You guys, this is the thing. I'm just going to be so honest and real in the sense of like, I have no idea why I am, why I was made this way. But they're surely out of freaking, I just looked up, I was like, okay, she's got a really big team. I looked up and saw nearly 300 people. So I'm assuming one of you guys will be able to relate to me, but this is how I am. <laughs> this is so stupid. So silly, but I'm just gonna be honest. When someone or a big group of people hype up something so drastic, aka TikTok, I like go the opposite direction. And I've done this with like, I've done this with a lot. I'm not gonna just start saying everything because you guys, you guys will really judge me. But like everyone starts hyping up TikTok and I'm like, nope, never will I. I was so dramatic about it that I went to my leadership chat and I was like, I don't wanna see any of you on, oh my gosh, I'm so mean. Saying it out loud, I'm like, ew. I was like, I don't wanna see any of you on TikTok. Time waster, not gonna last. I was just like, nope, nope, nope. Like can totally controlling them because I just, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but everyone hyped it up and I was like out the back door. And then I started having FOMO um, in the sense of like, okay, well people are actually signing a bunch of people now but then I was like well do I really like swallow my pride and tell my team hey I'm gonna try it now that I told you I will cut your fingers off if you get on it and so I don't know I think I started it in February and I just kind of started copying everyone and joint and doing it what everybody said and I, I remember Lauren Casmata saying you don't have to like do the dancing stuff and do all of that stuff you just have to like do a couple funny ones and just be yourself and like copy other people and you never know when one will go viral. And so I joined with wanting to go viral, but I was like, there's no race, there's no race. I'm just going to do this. And it took a lot of time. You guys, a lot of time. I maybe had a lack of discipline. I will say that. So I don't want to take time away. And I know Chrissy's very serious about her time. So I'm not going to tell you guys to all take time away from your business, go do it, but it took a lot of time. And I wouldn't say that it was all entirely worth it. If we're being honest. So you got to figure out how you're going to do it. If you're going to decide to do it. But then over the summer, whenever it was, I don't know, we all kind of stopped using it for a second. Some of us did. Um, and I have always just had like a stream, like maybe like two to three people a week coming through TikTok. So I never had a blow up ever, but I just copied a few people and I just had some views. Okay. Well, I don't know what it was, but like once this is me being weird, once everyone started saying that it's probably going to get shut down, I was like, well, I'm going to jump on it. I don't know why. And so, um, I think it was because in our mastermind group that we're a part of Brittany, I think it was Brittany Landrum was like, it's not going to get shut down. And she was so confident. And I was like, okay, well then I'll get on it. So I got back on it and I posted an old video of my little redheaded son. He's just a spitfire. He's crazy. By the I way, he's videos. so cute. I had no idea that he was so cute. As soon as you said that, I went and, go look, I went and like looked and I was like, why do I not know how cute this little cute redhead little kid is? Like, oh my gosh, he's freaking adorable. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is very freaking adorable. And I always post it on Facebook, but whatever. So someone talked about like posting old things to TikTok. And I was like, that's so smart. Because I was thinking, I'm like, he could be the thing that gets me viral. And I started getting really hyped. And I was like, but all of the stuff he did was like way back when. So I found this random little video. He's like super chubby and younger. And he's walking into my office and he's like, I like you. And he knows he's not supposed, he's a little sweet talker. And he knows when the doors closed, don't come in. And he goes, I like you. And that's all it is. And I'm like, what'd you say? And he goes, I like you. And I post it not thinking it would go viral. And it went viral and it went viral after like two hours. So I like was like logging in 30 minutes in an hour in. And I'm like, wow, he's still not cute enough for me to freaking go viral. I was getting so annoyed. And then it jumped up, but now it's at 4 million. And here's where it gets really good. Is like, everybody said, like everybody was saying like, have something go viral. Obviously you have no idea what's going to go viral. And then that next post has to be an opportunity one. And that's when the blowout comes. Well, that's not true. I'm just going to call bluff. That's not true. It didn't happen to me anyways. <laughs> and so, um, and I've had a couple of videos like not go viral. I don't know what viral means to me. It's like a million, but I had like one video where he said something funny to Zach and it got like a hundred K views, but I did the same thing with that. Nothing happened to that second video. So I was kind of getting annoyed in the sense of what everybody's training on. It's not working for me, but I kept going and this is what happened. 
within 12 to 24 hours, people wanted to go to my TikTok after seeing that video to see other videos of Elijah. Okay. So then, and I'm, I'm a psycho with this in the sense of like, I screenshot my old TikToks because I'm like, I'm going to see if the views jump. Everything jumped like 2000 to 4,000. So it wasn't my next TikTok. It was all the old ones that stuck and they're ugly and they're whatever. They never blew up. And now they're in like the four figures and they were jumping. So you guys, I've tried what everybody says. Like there are like, I trust Cheyenne Knox. She blows up on TikTok. I trust Morgan Martin. I trust those people that blow up, right? I'm not looking at 60 bajillion people on TikTok because I'll get in my head. I'm looking at the people that have had really good success and the people that I can connect with. Okay. So they've tried tried different things. They've tried, go to me, go to me on Instagram and DM TikTok, whatever. Other, they, other people have tried to text me TikTok. Other people have said, fill out the application in my bio. So I have all of these videos saying random things. And now you guys, I can't even, I'm not even kidding you. I have a stream of people coming in through all three of those. Cause I've tried them all in the past, February, March, April, and they're just scrolling, looking for Eli. <laughs> They're just looking for Eli and they're finding me and I'm okay with that. But I have all of these messages coming in, you guys. And I, something else I took from Brittany Landrum was she was like, some of my best people came from TikTok. And that's another reason. I don't know if anyone agrees with me. I'm not trying to be mean, but I also wasn't wanting to do it because I was like, yeah, everyone's talking about all the people they're signing. I'm not hearing if those people are sticking it out. So I don't want to sign people up just to sign them. So I kind of was thinking that everybody on TikTok was five years old. And I'm like, I don't need a bunch of 17 and a half year olds on my team. No offense to Shay, but she's like an anomaly in my eyes. So anyways, all of that stuff it proved me wrong. And it's been so fun. And that video went viral last Thursday and it's still like growing and uh, no no videos have gone since then and I have like put my all as much as I can into like random videos and stuff nothing is working but it's okay because they're still looking at the old videos and so anyways it's just been really really fun and what I would say to TikTok is don't waste a lot of time looking at I, I have not watched a single training if I'm on a team zoom and someone talks about it I'll listen I haven't intentionally gone and searched for it because I just I don't really have time for that. I have just, again, gone to a couple people that I trust that do really good on it. And I've only watched them and copied them. And then again, my son, I owe it all to him. Maybe, maybe he like made me famous. I don't know, but I just, that's what's going on right now. So anyway, sorry, all of that being said, I signed like six DTs up since then. Um, and it's fun because I feel like I got over this hump of not knowing how to sign people up for a hundred to TikTok opening the door. Um, and I have this wording, I don't know if you're using it, but the wording that Jocelyn Yates shared re recently um, on how to present the money, like the sense of typically it's $300 to join, but if you partner with me, it's 99. I was using that for all of them to where I've only used one out of my three code. I, I bought the summer camp ticket on all my accounts. So I've only used one of my codes because people, I don't have to give, give it away for $50. And I never thought that would happen. So I just feel really excited. And my mindset is if it's shut down next week, it's shut down, but I'm just going to try to ride the wave while it's here. And I'm just making myself not spend too much time on it. I love that so much. So that's kind of what I did. And I am like the exact same person. Everyone's like TikTok. And I'm like, no, I don't need TikTok. Yeah. And then I was like, oh my gosh, you guys have signed so many distributors from TikTok. What an idiot I am for not like jumping on it. And so I would like jump on it. And then I jump off. I'm like, I don't need it. And I jump on and I'd spend three hours. And I'm like, what is happening to me? And I jump off. I, I was like super bipolar with it because it is so easy to get lost. So I committed once Instagram reels came out, I committed to do it because it was two birds, one stone. I'm like, cool. If TikTok goes away, don't care. I have a bunch ready for my reels. So you guys, Instagram reels is popping. I have grown so many Instagram followers. What I'm doing is simply making a TikTok, but I picked one person because I'm like, Morgan doesn't have kids. I have kids. She can be cuter yeah. on camera than I can. I'm not going to do it. So I picked, um, Jocelyn because she's got babies in all of her freaking mm. videos. So I'm like, perfect. I can have babies in all my videos. So I picked one person, Jocelyn Yates. I go to her page because she's signed like 50 distributors this month so far from TikTok. So I'm like, and they're all coming to her, you guys. I teach so much, like you need to reach out to people, right? We, yeah. we message, but what if you were doing both? Your whole freaking mind would be blown. You don't even need a network for TikTok. Um, somebody asked like, how do you go viral on TikTok? You just freaking make videos and then you pray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like cool things like using viral music and being fun and yourself but that's pretty much it um and then so 
what I'm doing is I am going to her page, taking one. I'm not scrolling. I'm literally just copying it exactly. Like why not? Why, why make my, my life harder than it needs to be? Right. Copying it, saving it to my phone and then putting it on, um, Instagram reels and my Instagram reels, you guys are getting like 15 to 20,000 views. And I, I'm constantly having new followers constantly. I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So people, my story views are going up. Everything's going up. I'm still doing the things I'm still messaging. I'm still doing all of the, the, you know, normal business growing things. But if I can have a funnel of people just like throwing themselves at me, why would I not? So I wanted to talk about that with you because I was the same way. And I almost feel like crap. Did I just like, you know, blow the train for my team, but I'm like, you know what? it doesn't matter. It's like, it's like just when I joined and I saw these top 100 earners, I'm like, well, there's already 100 of them. So I'll be one Oh one, you know? Um, but here we are. So the train has not left the station. You can still get on. Um, okay. <laughs> so I wanted to add to that. Um, Oh, if you could share that, uh, script in the comments or the oh, chat, yeah. that would be awesome. I have not shared that with them because I'm like, y'all have too many scripts. You're going to confuse your mind up. Um, no. Okay. So I want to ask you this because you like, I am all about like vision. Like, I'm just like, don't care what you did. Where are you going? Don't care what happened. Where are you going? And that's what keeps me excited. And that's what keeps me fueled. So I kind of want to ask you a two part question. Like, how do you keep your, this is like the normal question. How do you keep growing your goals when you've already accomplished so much, or even for a newbie, how do you even set that goal? And then what is your, what is your goal? What's your 2021 goal? What do you want? Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's a really good one. And I think like, ugh, this sounds so cliche because people talk about it all the time, but it really is true. Like once you guys wrap your head around the fact of like, and this is for everyone, whether you're like a diamond leader or a Ruby leader, as long as you have one human underneath you, you're a leader, or maybe you're not one, but you need to figure out how to be one, but you have the potential to be one. Right. So, um, no matter who you are on here, you have to, once you get your mind wrapped around the fact that like, you cannot motivate, but you can inspire. I just, I always, it makes me so frustrated to hear like, I can't get my team to work or like, oh, I just hate that. Cause I'm like, that's not your job though. That's not your job in a sense. It's not your job. But when it comes to vision casting and stuff, this is always so hard because I think people look for like the perfect definition. And I truly feel like the best thing you can do is to show up consistently. And I know that's not the answer people want because they're like, well, I do. Or like people get defensive or they want like a perfect script or whatever. And it really is true. Like I think about my own leadership and just because I've mastered the, the act of showing up and keeping everyone close doesn't mean that I don't have people fall between the cracks. And again, like, like we were just kind of talking back and forth. Like there are seasons of people coming and going. And just because someone was meant to get like someone was meant to help me go triple 2.0 doesn't mean the next month it's now their third priority because they went back to work and all these things. You just have to realize that. So when it comes to vision casting and all of that, we are just staying closer than ever. We did it pre Corona and all the pandemic stuff. Like I remember, I think about it and this is what gets me excited to keep going in the midst of not knowing what the heck else 2020 has in store. Like I'm just like, can you just chill? It's one thing after another. Right. But business wise, it's been the best year we've ever had in the past six years, which is wild because emotional wise, it's been the worst year ever for so many. Right. And that personally, it's not affecting me necessarily, but my yellow heart, it's affecting me when it's affecting my team. Right. When people are coming to me saying like, I can't homeschool or like all of the stuff. I don't want to just start talking about all the negativity, but anyways, I think what gets me excited is I think about when everything came out, what after conference and everybody started going on lockdown and stuff. I remember people were freaking out, like people in certain chats that we're a part of, people in other things. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, we need to address this and we need to address it now. And not everybody agreed with that. Um, but I'm someone that like, it's almost like, and I make, I'm, I say this lightly and I like just, just using it as an analogy for those that can't keep up. I like for my, for, for example, like Zach gets so frustrated with, my, with me sometimes because I'll like pick fun at myself before someone else can. So like, you know, if someone compliments me and I'm like, oh, well, huh, yeah, I'm still big or whatever. He was like, why do you have to address that? You have to do it as if someone's going to make fun of you and no one's going to make fun of you. It's just insecurities, right? That's how I think of my team in the sense of like, if I don't address it, 
I leave space for someone else to in the way that I don't want it to be addressed, right? So pre uh, summer and spring, we addressed it. We got on a Zoom and there were like tears and we were praying and we talked about like, this is gonna be hard and who knows how long it's gonna last. But we came together close. And I think that's why we were able to creep up to number 12 because while people were kind of looking left and right and freaking the hell out, we were like, we can't control this, but we can control our business and what happens within our home. And that's just what gave me comfort. So now I, it gives me peace and knowing like, wow, think about how crazy it was in, in March when no one knew left from right. And here we finally got it figured out. Well, now it's almost like people are panicking again with homeschool, virtual learning, remote, all this stuff. And it's like, it's all going to be okay. Cause look where we were in March and look where we're at now. So, um, I think the best the best thing to do is to keep everyone close. I address what I think needs to address, what needs to be addressed, but I usually always address it when I have figured my crap out. Like when I'm in a rut and I'm feeling hard, like when something hurts me or something affects me, I don't ever talk about it when I'm in it because I'm very good at having a pity party. I'm good at whining. I'm good at just being sad. It's just weird. And I know myself. So I don't talk about it until I've learned how to get out of it. And then I can talk about being in it. And now that we're out of it, this is what we're going to do. So that's a little tip for you guys. Never obviously good to get your team on a Zoom and be like, well, this is how hard it is. This is what sucks. I'm mad at corporate, all of the things, right? We all have all these things that we could obviously complain about, right? But that's what's helped. And then you had another part to that question and I, I'm losing it. Um, let me add to that just before I ask you okay. what I asked you, uh, where are you going basically? But oh, I want to add to that too, because it's funny, like you, I mean, we, we vision cast fairly the same. I'm just like, cool story. Wear your mask. Where's your business going? <laughs> because you guys like, there's things you can control and there's things you can't. And like, it's so true that there are businesses who thrive in recessions. There are two types of people when the housing market crashes. There are the people with the opportunity and they like become billionaires like within, you know, a year because they prepared for, you know, years ahead to be able to have that opportunity. And there's people who lose their houses. And I'm not saying that, you know, this guy's bad and this guy's good or vice versa. I'm just saying that like where you steer, that's what grows period, end of story. Like, where are we going? That's what I care about. You want to talk about this? Cool. Message me. You have like two minutes. Let's talk about it. Where are you going? Because it, it just has no growth, right? Like, just like what you said, like it, 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 there's just no place for it, you guys. And there are people who this year, we, we doubled our team. We doubled our business. And I, I'm sure the same thing happened for you. And I'm like, what is happening? But I remember when it first started happening, like, you know, the Corona, I was like, you know what? We're buckling down. We're focused forward. Like this might be the weird thing that we all like prayed for without praying for it. Like at the end of 2019, we were all like, we feel the run, like it's coming, it's coming. Like we just like felt this like huge thing, like at the top 20 retreat, you know, like we're just like, we feel it, we feel it. And then January came and it kind of like wasn't there and we're like, what's happening? It's fine, it's coming, it's coming. And then like February came and we're like, what's happening? And then we're like, oh my gosh, there's a global pandemic. And then March came and we're like, okay, maybe this is our thing, like <laughs> just run right through it. And so you guys like, you are the leader of like vision casting for your team. It's not me. It's not Rachel. It's not Claire. It's, it's not Stacy. It's not Eliana. Like you for you and you're one person. They care about where you and them are going, not where I'm going. Right. Um, but anyways, I just think that's so good too to talk about because it, it, it has happened like with homeschool and people are like, I don't know. And I'm like, yes, you can. You have full control over it. Yes, you can. Um, okay, so where are you going? Like, what is your vision for the rest of the year for 2021? Like, where do you see yourself, the company, everything like that? Because I just love hearing that stuff because it like opens up my mind. When we got on our abundance chat and Alyssa was like, five million or whatever she said in 10 years or, you know, 10 million in five years, I was like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I like, I like started like overheating. I was like, okay, I'm not dreaming big enough, you know? And so I just thought that was so cool. But um, anyways, I'll let you talk. <laughs> 
no, I felt the same. I was like, oh, I don't have a five-year plan. Okay. Um, like gut check. I did want to say real quick, I saw Ashley said in the, um, she said in the thing she asked, like how to keep your team close or whatever. Guys, what helped me the most, I'm very, very sensitive and I would obviously love for everyone to stay with me forever. And it still hurts. Like I had, I literally had a new distributor that I joined that signed up part of that TikTok little craze last week. She signed up, uh, and this weekend I helped her sign two of her own customers. And I just, I'm going back to like celebrating those crazy wins because I feel like if we're just not grateful for it, how can we expect to be blessed? So I'm like, let's go back to celebrating each loyal and not being greedy because we got caught up in all of the big numbers. Right. And so like I had my heart set on this little cutie, little cutie tootie, and we only have built a relationship for the past five days. So nothing serious, but she freaking told me today that she got offered a job and this, she didn't realize how much time she had to put into this and like completely bailed on me after signing two customers. And I was just like, that still freaking hurts. It still hurts just because I'm like, I believe in it. So I want you guys to know that something that helped me, Ashley, sorry, not you guys, Ashley specifically, something that helped me when like, when I rally my team up and I keep them close, I cannot physically and emotionally focus on those that don't show up. And that was, that sounds crazy and like common sense, but um, it's what helped me because I would get so frustrated and I'm a little psycho. <laughs> I'm a little psycho, kind of like what Christy did, but I get a little bit deeper in the sense of search bar. Is this triple on? Is this presidential on? And I'm like, where are you at? Where are you at? And Christy was on our team zoom last week and she, hit me hard in the sense of like it, you just just long story sorry that was just another aha moment for another day but anyway something that helped me is when I stopped focusing on those that aren't wanting to be a part of the inner circle that aren't showing up um, and focus on those that are and so um, I always try to like try to pay attention to who is missing out and I'll, I'll message them and stuff but I feel like I was stopping myself from pouring into those that wanted it because I was so mad at those that didn't, right? So that might be something that helps you, Ashley, but nothing crazy. I just literally, we do Zooms together and we love each other. And something that helped me was we shut down our diamond chat and I only have a triple chat because it's obviously a lot smaller and we made the diamond chat into a diamond page so there was no small talk because it wasn't serving our leadership so now I have this great relationship with my triples and some of you guys are on here might be like I don't have triples okay same for you what about your leadership your rubies might be your triples right so um, I just have it with them and I feel like it starts at the top so keeping your key players extra extra close loving on them building that relationship triples downward to those that want it and those that don't I'm not saying just to dump them but I'm kind Kind of saying to dump them and loving them out right loving them where they are okay so anyways my plans for 2021 we just talked about this on our zoom earlier but we were talking about like if we shift our mindset from wanting things right now to everything i do right now sets me up for 2021 that is what has me excited because i'm just gonna be honest you guys july was the worst month of the year for me which i was expecting because we've had really high months every single month since january major raises major raises like it's been an, an anomaly year for us so I knew July was going to be weird just based on logistics and not trying to be a downer, just calling it as it is. I'm a realist in that sense. And so honestly, having July as like my hall pass kind of month, like, like on paper, it looks like a really bad month, but internally and emotionally, I did a lot of growth through that. Um, with getting, keeping me excited through the rest of the year, coming out of a month where like my check went down nine grand and some people are like, would be freaking out. But me and Zach were like, oh yeah, we still stayed above our number. And like, now we dropped to where we can't drop any lower. We can only go up. We're so hyped about it. Just channeling our, our inner mindset, right? We are excited to get through the rest of the year because I know that what I do now is going to pay off in January. It's what's going to start the year off hot. And some of you guys might be like, well, I don't understand. I might not make it to 2021. I'm only in temporarily. I get it. There might be people that join today and you're like, this is like long-term stuff we're talking about. But if you think about next year and you think about your work paying off then, then you'll stop being so impatient at what's not like revealing itself right now because we get so caught up in January, February, and March with getting 10 host posts up and signing 30 people in a day. Not really, but you guys get what I'm saying. It comes in really fast. Well, honestly, it's just not always gonna happen like that. So we get naive in thinking that all 12 months are gonna be fast paced and psycho and everyone's gonna sign up. There, do, do, there are points in this business that just are a little bit slower. And I know some people disagree with talking about that, but I do because I'm just, I just think it's a little bit ignorant to think that all 12 years can be really psycho good. And if you do have that mastered, you need to teach me. I've never had that happen to me. But with that being said, I'm excited to finish out this year because I'm excited for 2021. And I know that that's what's going to do. So for me, I had this exciting plan. Well, when I made my dream board last year, I was like, 
my 2.0 was a Ruby <laughs> in December. So I'm like, how do I dream big for this little team that I don't even have? It was really weird for me. And so I was like seeing all my other friends that went ambassador on the same time and they were all like triple 2.0 for 2020. So I was like triple 2.0, we'll do it. Didn't believe it was gonna happen. Well, then it happened in March, April. In April, it just was like bing, bang, boom. And I was like, wow, I called Cammy and I was like, I don't know what I need from you, but I'm freaking out. Almost like it's happening too fast. Am I being greedy? I don't know if my team's ready. And I kind of feel like I spoke that they weren't ready over them because then it kind of slowed down a little bit and I started weeding people out. But I thought I was going to go prez in um, the beginning of summer and then just things kind of slowed down and I need to rebuild and all of the things. So with that being said, with it being like the past two months, we've just been rebuilding and redreaming and figuring out like who really is going to be going on this next run with us. Um, I'm excited to just use the next few months, the rest of 2020 to just build a solid team, even if that means I'm not promoting again this year because I'm so excited with what we've established and I feel like our residual has grown and I feel like I found my place and how to train my team. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I figured out how to like love people where they are and people are either going to run or they're going to walk and I can just stay. I don't know how to explain it, but anyways, my goal is to just rebuild, rebuild, regroup to where my team is so strong with the volume for Prez because I had all my people promote. Like that's how close we were to promoting all my, I went, I had a girl go triple, double, and diamond, but we came 20K short from Prez Volume. Um, so I, I have it kind of where it needs to be. There just needs to be some new people. I'm excited to like hit Prez in the beginning of next year and then like right after like this year, go ambassador. That's my plan, like in the first quarter, which will be super psycho. But I feel like if you automatically make, if you make plans ahead of time, I just feel like you can only set yourself up for success by dreaming. If you don't have a vision and a plan, you can't plan for anything because you don't have it, right? It's the same thing like when I went prez, um, when I went prez, when I, sorry, when I'm speaking like I went, when I was boxed for prez, I put my chart away. And then I was like, wait, I'm not even signing distributors because I don't know where I put them, right? Because I put my chart away. And I thought like I had made it because everybody was in the position. I know who I need. I memorized it. But if you're not physically looking at something, you're not doing what it takes for that, right? And so I talked about it too on the previous Zoom, but like what I have to do to keep me motivated is every month I have to write down like spots for like distributors or I won't sign them because now I've mastered mastered how to sign so many loyals. And that was great when I was trying to promote, but now I'm like not trying to promote. I'm trying to build my team. And I'm like, I don't know how to sign distributors. So I had to get excited about it again. And for me, that was started with like a blank sheet of paper. And this month I'm like, I'm going to sign 15. I'm going to do it. Not knowing that we were going to have $24 kits and $50 kits. And I'm at 10 right now. And for me, 10, I kid you not. I'm so bad at, I was so bad at signing distributors that 10 feels like a hundred. Like I feel like I am like high on life lit. Like I told Zach, like I'm just like crazy in love with this business because I've signed 10. That's how hard it was for me. So I feel like it was looking at this again and just seeing stuff all over my house of like, I'm just doing it all over again. I don't know if that even makes sense, but that's what I'm going for is rebuild, rebuild for the rest of this year, get my team solid. And then we're going to run through 2021. And I know that I'll do it and I'll be double ambassador. Um, if Pam heard you say rebuild, she would cut you. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you oh, say yeah. like 12 times. And I'm like, Pam, Pam, like my ear. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're never rebuilding. We're always building. Yes. Um, yes. I know. Sorry. No, I, I love that though, because you are so real and I'm going to share my story about it because I got girls going for ambassador by the end of the year. And I truly yes everybody's business is so different. Like some people, they promoted this year already. Some people haven't. So they're about to, and you know, everyone's just at different places. But I remember last year, um, it was so, you know, obviously, okay, let me just explain this. My checks have gone up in November and December before, but usually just from history, they had gone down July, August, and September at least. So this past, this last year, I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so um, I, in July of last year, I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed so hard for some freaking rock stars. That's basically what I did. I was like, Lord, like I'm ready for them. Like give them to me. I want them. I'm going to coach them. Like I'm going to have the vision for them. I'm going to freaking do it. And I signed a few girls that went diamond in 90 days and two of them are double. One of them's triple. Liza, what month did you sign? 
March. I don't know. Anyways. Um, oh, she went November. Yeah. So long story short, I lost my presidential 2.0 in like August of last year. And I regained it in September. And because of those mm. three girls I signed in July, my checks raised at the end of the year and I wow. did not lose presidential. And I truly believe because of those last six months, that's why I was able to go double ambassador this year. And so I'm just like, you just never know what is ready to enter your business unless you ask for it. And, um, I, I appreciate you sharing all that too, because I think it's so important for people to understand, like, it's just not always going to be perfect. Like people will, people will come to me and they'll be like, Oh, well, I have 12 girls not working. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> go sign some more. Um, you know, like it's one of those things. And, and this is what we have to do. Like when we're really just ready to run exactly what you said, we have to section people like, Hey, you're ready to run. So I'm going to run with you. You guys want to walk. So this is where my attention goes. And then my other attention goes into bringing new, like that's where my attention goes. It just does. Um, we have some fancy questions. So yeah. uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, once you go ambassador, you can open up your 2.0 and go there, or you can work with the people on your 1.0. Um, I chose to go to my 2.0 because my 1.0 didn't need me. They can get you ambassador on their own. And they're all either have or are working on it. They don't need me. <laughs> I was like, y'all don't need me. The company lets you open up a second account, essentially. So I got Christy on my top line. I have two paychecks get to make a lot of money. Um, and I like to share this because when people have shared this with me, like when Pam shared on her zoom, how, you know, there are people in, in companies that have been around for 20, 30, 40 years, like they've been in their company for 20, 30, 40 years. They're making two, five, so much hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Okay. And so you guys, like I set a goal to make, I think it was 85 this year. That's what I, that's what I had set. 85 was like my first goal. And then after that it was 110. Um, we got really freaking close. We got really freaking close. And if I made that, I know you made a lot too, Rachel. So when people hear, um, you know, a $9,000 paycheck difference, it, it's like this, it's like the equivalent of a diamond having a $500 paycheck difference. It's a, it's a percentage of it. <laughs> And so, um, it's just a small percent, it's fine, just $9,000, but that's the blessing, right? Like you can go up 17, 20, 30,000 in one month and that can fluctuate wherever you want it to steer. And so, um, yeah, you, you're so awesome. Okay. So does anybody have, we only have seven minutes. And so I want to leave like five minutes for you guys. If you guys have any specific questions for her, she is a host to post queen. She lives on, she lives, breathes, thinks, host to post. <laughs> is there anything while we ask them, is there anything that you, besides TikTok that we've been talking about that you just feel like has been a game changer as far as like your leadership? Because you, I'm just going to say this, even though you're my guest. Okay. You do not give yourself enough credit. You are number 12 in the entire company. And like, you do not give yourself enough credit. You're like, I don't sign a lot. Of it. Well, clearly. You make a lot because you sign what you should be signing and you know how to coach them and lead them with that vision. So you are not giving yourself enough credit. So what do you think uh -huh. the number one thing is, is for like a new distributor um, or someone like Diamond that really wants to just level up their, um, their like willingness to, to lead people and just have that, you know, stronger leadership connection? Yeah. Oh, kind of okay. a weird question. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So newbies, if you're a newbie wanting to level up, uh, I would say be a student, become a student and listen. And I would say dive into host post right away. And I know that this is something like every team kind of trains a little bit different. So I'll just say what we do, but what we do is, um, what I do, I guess my, I can't speak for all of my leaders, but for the most, for the majority of us, we add to a team page. And then I just have this short little seven minute welcome video. I'm just like, Hey, who I am, because I do a lot of the training. I don't do all of it, but I do do a lot of the training. Um, and we like reference old videos and stuff, but we literally like it's step, step one is the little short video. Step two, put a starter post. Step three is like, 
starting to message right off the bat. And we went from messaging your like loved ones to messaging strangers. Long story short, we just went through a phase where everyone's freaking loved ones were being so mean, <laughs> so horrible. Cause sometimes the ones that love us the most are the most freaking skeptical. And so like what was happening was our newbies would be like, you're telling me this is supposed to be easy. And this is my first step. And I can't even get them to be nice to me. How the heck am I going to do it? So it was just freaking me out. And I'm like, okay, well, let's go to the stranger side. So we have strangers host post for us and we just have this little message and I can send it to you. Um, and we get those host posts up going right away. And once we do that, if a, a newbie is willing to do that, I say willing because sometimes there's a disconnect and they'll like say they message 20, but they only did five. And you can kind of see like how they're going to work with the first couple steps. So if they're willing to do that and they get in those active conversations, we can usually keep them going. And like, if we just keep them going and we get those host posts up, they can do good. They can do good. It's just, they don't get those host posts up right away. I've noticed within my team, that's where it's like, there's that disconnect and they're going to fade out unless we can freaking pull them in. So that's what I would say for newbies is latch onto your leader and learn host to post, master it right away. You just get those fast wins. And I think as a new distributor being so scared and fearful, you need those wins to tell you that you're in the right place. Right. That's, that was me anyways. I was like something to tell, give me a sign. And I just was desperate. And I got I called Zach's family. I was like, love me, please. But when it comes to leaders leveling up, I love leadership. If it, if it was up to me, I would only like to do leadership. I would like to pay someone to train my newbies. And I just go hang out with the, with the leaders just because I've made mistakes and I've grown through it and I just love leading. I really love leading. And so I think that I don't really necessarily believe everyone was either born as a good leader or not. I think it's something that you can always learn. And I think skills can always be learned, right? And you can always grow that leadership muscle. So I would say if you're really willing to level up, I think I always do this. I still do it to this day when I'm ready to like, if I've come out of like a weird funk and I'm like, ready to go on a run or ready to do something. I'm always rallying up the troops, making it this big ordeal. And I get on and I'm like, I am ready. Let's go. And I don't always know what to say. And I think that sometimes we think we're not qualified for that. Like I think some people, even maybe on here, maybe you're a diamond, not being paid as a diamond, or maybe you're a new diamond, or maybe you're shy. I don't care what it is, but we underqualify ourselves. And we're like, I don't have it in me to make a graphic saying it's exclusive zoom and it's just me talking. And we get all freaked out. But the thing is, is like, I think the reason why I succeed in leadership is like, I know I don't have all everything to offer. I know that I'm not the most perfect person. Like I know there are people in this, on this, uh, in, in top 10 even that go live and do things on their team page every day. And I'm like, I don't, think I have enough knowledge for that. Like I'm willing to own that, but my team loves me through that because I've never tried to be someone I'm not. I have Zooms still to this day on Sundays. We do our team Zooms. There are Zooms where I'm just like, man, this is not my best. I'm sorry. It's just an off day. I'm not my best. I'm sorry. I don't ever try to be someone I'm not. So show up for them. Tell them you have a plan and just do the dang thing. You know, get on like, there are so many leadership YouTube videos and books that have helped me so, so, so much. If you want to like really level up your leadership, the first First book I did it was with a book it was with an FDR um, that led it in our company and she did developing the leader within you by John Maxwell that's a good leadership book to start but then if you really want to level up and like you're like listening and you're like I accept all responsibility you need to either buy leadership or high performance habits. Those books are not books for pleasure. They're not books for pleasure. They're not like, I'm gonna read in the pool and enjoy it. It's like, wow, I'm taking notes and I'm going back to my team and I'm teaching them how to be a bomb freaking leader. And so that's what's helped me is like, I read these level these leadership books that like, you have no choice but to level up if you're truly reading them. And I'll go back and take that to my team and be like, guys, I need to dive into chapter five. And as I'm reading this book, like some, some segments I read out of it or otherwise I take notes, I'm making my own stuff up in between. So if you guys, like there really is no excuse why you can't lead your team and do these Zooms as a leader, whether you're a diamond or not, if you want to be a leader, you should start showing up because if there's nothing worse than your team not seeing you as a leader. It hurts. It sucks when people go above you and they like just don't see you as one. They will see you as one if you start to offer value to their life. And so I don't say that to freak you out in the sense of like, I don't know how, because <laughs> that scares me too. Like on my newsfeed, I'm like, I don't know how to offer value and be cool. It's not necessarily like you're looking for this special recipe. You're just being a little bit louder, you being you a little bit louder, right? And no, I'm not everybody's cup of tea underneath me, but those that want it, I vibe with them and I show up for them. I'm not showing up for those that aren't for that. Does that make sense? So that's what I would say for leveling up your leadership. In a sense, you just have to show up. And sometimes if you want to get to the next level, you have to do things that you don't typically do. You have to spend some money on self-development. You have to stay up a little later. You have to do those things. And then they become like habitual in a sense of like, I don't know how to not be a leader 
because I do it every day, whether I'm intentionally doing it or not, because I've practiced it that much. So yes. That yes. Oh my gosh. Exactly. It's like, there's certain things where I'm like, I have to consciously decide to not step up because it's such a habit now, like step out so someone else can step up because it yeah. is such a habit now, you know? And I want to um, add to that because that was a really good question, but um, I had a girl that I talked to today. So this might be a little bit different, you guys, but I had a girl that I talked to today and I have basically, she's had some distributors placed under her long story short. And she's like, I don't know how to, how to lead them. They, I didn't sign them. I'm like, so you guys, there are going to be people that jump off here that have never heard one thing I've said. And that you're like, Rachel is the shiz. And you're like, so hyped up on life. And I'm like, am I chop liver? Right. Yeah. The thing is, is you want your downline to learn from whoever it is, no matter what it benefits you a thousand times fold. And even if it's you connecting them with that person and then benefiting from that, you have to own that. So like my goal is for this person to be able to connect with them and them to see her as a leader. I don't want to be the only leader that doesn't do me any justice. That doesn't do that person any justice. And so I'm like, no, you have to step up in order to learn and they will respect you when you give them value. Just like what you said, Rachel, just give them value by doing the work, showing it. Um, do you have anything to kind of add to that? Ask for help. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because I, listen, while I love leadership and so freaking much, I could do it in my sleep. And I think Chrissy feels the same way. Like she said, I need to piggyback off that and make that very clear. Even though we love it does not mean I want to be the only one doing it. Like, so I will say that that's something too. Like some people will be like, well, how do I get my team to step up? well, it's freaking hard as crap. And I feel like this is my biggest flaw that I have to pray about and like literally work through is allowing like some, and someone said that, like, you have to kind of step down and allow people to step up. And like, I hear Cammie's voice in my head all the time. Like sometimes I think that I don't allow my team to step up because I have this perfect way I do it. And I, sometimes it's like, it's funny. Cause I think in our, in our standpoint, at my standpoint, I'm like, I could, I could find myself being frustrated and being like, well, this person's not stepping up. Why don't I have more? I have 39 plus outside of my strong league diamonds and above. Why aren't more people stepping up? Am I even allowing them to though? Or have I displayed this image that only I can do it perfectly to where they think they could never do it as good. So they in, in return, just keep their mouth shut. Right. I've had that. I've had those situations where it's, it's been so loud and clear and it's hurt because I'm like, wow, am I sabotaging myself at being so good at being a leader that I'm not allowing other people to fail for forward and step into that, right? Because in 2014, I wasn't who I am now. Like I probably gave the worst leadership advice, right? As I grew, grew into that. But what I wanted to say real quick was, um, a lot, like what I wanted to really mostly say was like, uh, asking for help. So like, for example, we do our team zooms every Sunday. Well, I just got back from camping Sunday and I was like, honestly, I'm just trying to like relax for the rest of the day and start over on Monday because I'm just not always feeling it right. I just literally got off the camping trip and I was whooped. So I got in my triple chat and I was like, listen, we can either cancel it and do something because we had a team zoom tonight. I was like, we can cancel it and use Mondays or if someone else wants to do it. And two of my triples led a power hour that was so freaking good. And I still got on it, even though I didn't preach. And I was like, dang, I learned something. So it's like, sometimes people won't step up unless you ask. Um, so I would just say that for anybody on here, that's like, well, how do I get my other team to help me? Cause I don't have it in me to do Zooms all the time or to be the only leader ask, encourage, and allow them to make those mistakes and love them through that. And again, I think that's my biggest mistake. Those are like the biggest mistakes I've made is maybe not encouraging people to mess up as they go up because I know I can do it really good. And I say that and it sounds conceited, but I know I have a way I do things and it's just like me and my husband, like, you know, with certain things, like I prefer he doesn't do the dishes because I'm like, I don't know how you can even get through life doing them that way. Like we have ways we do things to where other people can't do them as good as we, we make it seem that way. So instead they're just not going to do it at all. You might be doing that too. So I just shared that um, in case anyone needed to hear that just ask and encourage and then you'll that's where you'll start that duplication and provide a place where you don't have to be the one in charge all of the time i love that so much and you guys don't ever dwind this is my thing too don't ever dwindle your shine to let someone step up just ask them to right like direct them where you want them but do not stop showing up because most of you guys you are your only leader. People will be like, my leader is that like, girl, you don't have leaders. 
<laughs> I'm like, you got, you got a couple people that will not show up unless you drag them on that freaking team training. I'm like, you don't have leaders yet. Like it's you. <laughs> and so you have to like lead them to that. But you also have to realize that like, that doesn't mean that you don't get to not show up. You know, it's, it's a hundred percent lead by example is the number one thing, but you have to start almost strategically allowing people to show up in other ways. Like last night I did that. We had a 15 minute thing and I'm like, I could do it. I could do it in two seconds. I didn't have anything else to do, but I said, Hey, who wants to host? It was like crickets. And then two girls were like, I'm going to do it. And I was like, okay, good, good. I'm so excited. Um, and I'll just end on one thing. If you want to add to it too, you guys, your mindset is everything. Some of you guys are going to get off here and you're going to be like, thanks so much for the tips. But I, I mean, I've seen the comment 20 times. And just so you guys know, if you're new to this team, I'm going to call you out no matter what, every single time if you put something in the chat negative. Okay. Here's the deal. You don't get to be negative and positive at the same time. They are opposites. You don't get to pretend like you're being positive, but actually saying something negative. It takes like you saying 10 things positive to be equivalent to one negative. So you better go look yourself in the mirror and say like 87 things positive about yourself because here's the deal. You don't get to say, I have, nobody responds to my host post, nobody responds to my messages, but this was a great training. I'm like, okay, that, I can guarantee you're gonna get off this training and not do anything. Okay, so I need you guys to understand that the only thing that's gonna grow your confidence is your action. Okay. And you're not going to want to take action unless you start to speak it out there. I am, I am, I freaking am, I freaking am. I don't care how you are. I don't care if you have to yell at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I am beautiful. I am strong. I'm a great leader. Everyone freaking is responding to my host of posts. I remember when like that influencer application came out, people were like, it's working. And I'm like, oh, it's probably not going to work for me. And it did it. And then I was like, oh, I know better than this. And I was like, everybody's filling out my influencer application. And then all of a sudden people started to. It is the law of attraction, but also it's just your confidence. Like people are attracted to confidence. And if you are not confident, even in your own home, People can feel that when you send the messages. People can feel that when you try to jump on live and fake it, okay? So please make sure that you start your day. Start after this. Do a power hour. Work for an hour. Sending out messages. Sending out host posts. But start it with everyone is responding to me. I'm signing a distributor right now today. I am doing this. Like You have to start your day and everything, every action you take in this business, it has to start like that, you guys. If you don't start it like that, you're being fake. You're faking it. And I always say like, fake it to make it, but that's the action. You can fake the action. You can fake being, acting like a diamond before you're a diamond, but you cannot fake the confidence. People will, people will understand that, okay, she's new and they'll still be attracted to that if you're excited. But if you're like, no one's going to respond to me anyways, but Rachel said, I'm going to send out these messages. And then you're like doing that. Guess what? Nobody's going to respond to you. Like I, I already, I have to send you guys, have I not proved that this business works? Right. And I have to send messages. I have to follow up that seven to 12 times, just like everybody else. You guys, I have to do it just like everybody else. Okay. My growth in this business, my confidence for the business, it doesn't matter if, in that moment, I'm not feeling that confidence and like they are going to say yes. Okay. Um, is there anything you want to share with that, Rachel? No, that's good. I'll just leave it with this. You guys like, like Christy said, it's mindset and that's all it's going to keep coming back to. So, um, if you guys just like, you have to be, you, this sounds so silly and it sounds like common sense when you hear it sometimes, unless you're in it, but it's like, if you guys can't be okay with where you're at, you will either one, never get to the next level and not even the next level, but let's talk about like big dreams, right? Like the diamond, if you're an executive and you want that come in your paycheck, you'll either one, not get to that level. Or when you do, all things will crumble. And I've been there, you guys, I've been making good money in this business, but internally and in my home life, I didn't have things figured out and I wasn't exactly happy while making a lot of money. So be okay with where you're at. Be okay with starting at distributor. Be okay with not having any DTs. And that's going to make you be really grateful for every single thing that comes into your business and you're going to attract abundance and it's going to keep on coming. So I just want to just say that because I think that it's very easy. And I was that way too, almost like unintentionally negative because I wanted 
wanted it so bad that I found myself just complaining about all the things I didn't have because I'm just like, I want it so bad that I'm like extra negative in a sense. So I get what where you're at, but if you're not okay with where you're at and you're not truly ready for what's going to come, that, that could be why you're stuck. So there were a lot of people talking about host to post and stuff, and I'll just leave you with one host to post tip real quick because host to post will always work, but your network won't. So you have to always have a revolving network. And so what's helped me is um, getting like a new host post schedule in the sense of this isn't, some of you guys are already might be doing it, but there's someone on here will hear it in a good way. Um, every single day, not every day, but when you feel like it's a slow day with host to post, start off with your first three host to post. This is what's working right now. The towel post, the A or B, how do you fold it? A or B, right? It's, you'll see it. I don't know how, I mean, I have it, I guess, but like you'll, you'll probably, you probably already have it or you can search it somewhere, but it's a, it's a, a collage and it's A, B and it's folded two different ways. It's so freaking dumb, <laughs> but people like to give their opinion, right? People like to, and honestly, it doesn't even have to be the towel one. You could probably do like some kind of good, healthy debate. Let's not do politics or anything, but like a healthy debate on how to fold your towels or whatever, where people want to participate. What we've been doing, my team has been doing, is we've been doing like the first couple host posts every day is having someone on our network doing the partnered up one. And so they're posting the towel pick or whatever debate you want to create for yourself. And so like, let's say Christy comments on my giveaway and Christy's like, yeah, I'll post for you and it's tomorrow morning, she would post, she's like my first person I messaged, she would post the towel post. She would say, my friend Rachel is giving away whatever your giveaway, insert it, drop, pick A or B to enter. And now Christy's gonna have 50 people comment and now I'm gonna add all of them. And then I'm gonna put this message real quick in the chat room. Um, this is nothing crazy, I just made it up myself, but I think because I addressed that a lot of people aren't verifying their entry, I kid you not, it's freaking working like a charm because I'm telling people, this is where people are going wrong. I'm saying, hey, hey there, to fully confirm your entry, I'll give you a post to throw up on your wall. This is where a lot of people aren't confirming. They're missing out, LOL, like I'm addressing. Because how many people open up your dang, dang message? It makes me so mad, because I'm just like, just throw the post up. So if you guys start sending that out and you get the partnered up one, like I kid you not, do three to five good people tomorrow morning. You will be catapulted through the week because now I'm going to take a while to get all 50 of Christy's people to post for me. So I'll just say that if you guys are on here, because I know there were some not negative, but some of you guys are feeling a little defeated with host posts. I was keeping up with the chat room. That should help you. And whenever it feels like host to post isn't working, it's not host to post. I say that with confidence. It's not host to post. It's just you're not doing the homework to get new people on your feed to where your people see your stuff and you have new people to ask. That's just all it is. And I say that with confidence because every other week I am in that I'm in that thing where I'm like well my news feeds jank I need new people on there it's just how it is but I will end with this just me saying that that partnered up works it does work but you also do need the right people okay so I'm not gonna have someone where I go to their Facebook and I'm like wow I probably wouldn't be their friend or they're posting a lot of negative stuff or they're doing naughty things on Facebook just because they say yes to posting doesn't mean I'm gonna automatically give them a post where now I'm attracting 50 of their friends when I don't even I'm not even attracted to them does that make sense I, I just I'm trying to explain what I mean without being very very mean you guys catch what I'm saying um, be very choosy with that um, and it will definitely bless you and keep you busy you don't have to filter yourself here. We all get it. <laughs> I'm like trying to be so classy and I'm trying to be a good Christian. Listen, guys, uh, just so you know, we're going black diamond next year, which means every single one of you guys is going diamond and above or whatever your next rank is minimum. And so we got to level up. Okay. We got to level up everything around us, but those are really awesome tips. I can't copy and paste here. So if someone could copy and paste and just slide into my inbox um with that and then i'll post it on the team page but you are amazing thank you so 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 much and we appreciate you being on here and me taking way too much of your time i know it's super late there but um thank you and i appreciate you and we'll see you guys later bye guys